Constructivism and Educational Tools Constructivism is a learning theory that focuses on the learner constructing their own knowledge and understanding of the world through their own experiences and social and cultural contexts. In basic terms, instead of trying to draw upon memory in the classroom, the best way to learn is to actively try a concept out and then reflect on the experience. It is a hands-on and active way of learning that allows students to build layers of knowledge and gives students the freedom they need to experiment, be creative and ultimately become leaders of their own learning throughout their lifetime. This approach teaches students how to learn in the classroom and through the use of reflection, although this is, this does not mean that the, the teacher is a passive figure in the classroom. The teacher has a very important role in shaping their students' experiences, planning them and understanding the different dynamics of the students in the classroom so that students find activities interesting. They encourage and accept the students' autonomy and allow students to drive the lesson. The teacher acts as a facilitator that guides students instead of telling them what to do or what to what is right and wrong. They lead students through guided discovery so that they can become so that they can come to useful conclusions by the end of the lesson. When traditional classrooms and constructivist classrooms are compared, there are some major differences. In a traditional classroom, teaching is done by loading students with information and then expecting them to grasp onto the knowledge by working hard to memorize it. Strict adherence to this curriculum is highly valued. Learning is based on repetition. Students engage in passive learning as the teacher regurgitates information. Students work alone in a competitive environment and the teacher's role is of, often authoritarian. In a constructivist classroom, students are constantly drawing meaning and actively participating in the lessons that are being taught. Learning is extremely interactive and the pursuit of questioning is highly valued. Given the context, the information they are being taught immediately becomes meaningful as the teacher, as the teacher has a dialogue with the students, helping them to construct their own knowledge and making them more likely to remember the content without them having to recall memory. Constructivist classrooms are usually very busy with ideas flying everywhere. Students are always working collaboratively in order to, be, to come to a conclusion. The student is actively participating also by giving suggestions and guiding students to the right answer. This is the key to constructivist learning. There are two forms of constructivism, psychological constructivism and social constructivism. For psychological constructivism, the focus is on the individual and how they construct their own learning and draw meaning from it, whereas social constructivism refers to the individual's environment and the social context they are involved in. The interaction of both these concepts is extremely important for retaining knowledge and cognitive growth. There are a few teaching strategies that can enhance student learning. Many of these include but are not limited to inquiry learning or discovery learning, real life activities, reflections as mentioned before, group work, presentations and scaffolding. Why do we need technology in the classroom? We're forced, well first of all ICT is a key capability in the Australian curriculum. In the PDHB syllabus, PDHB is a subject that effectively teaches students how to use ICT effectively and appropriately by helping them to investigate, create and communicate ideas and information at school, at home and also in their communities. In PDHP, students use ICT to filter through online health and physical activity information to promote their own health and well-being. They use ICT to maximise their safety and the safety of others as well as using it to maintain respectful relationships. PDHP PE allows students to use a range of ICT tools that are very beneficial to their learning and these next few slides will explain these tools how these tools can be used to support the constructivist theory support diverse learners and how they can be implemented safely in the classroom youtube is an online interactive tool where people all over the world create view share knowledge through videos youtube is built upon the foundation of collaboration and interaction which is a major principle when dealing with constructivist theory the social aspect of this online learning tool allows students to get, engage in a wide array of videos and present or create videos of their own. By using this learning tool in the classroom, students become explorers as they navigate their way through the site to pick out information that is relative to the topic and draw conclusions from thousands of videos on the website. 
This form of learning through exploration is another key factor of the constructivist approach. YouTube is a powerful tool that adds a dynamic element to the classroom as it improves knowledge transfer for diverse learners, demonstrates complex procedures, and explains difficult topics. How does YouTube support the needs of diverse learners? YouTube supports students who learn through visual and kinesthetic means of delivery by using video to demonstrate or explain certain topics and listening topics and listening to online lectures and podcasts on YouTube addresses verbal and auditory learners. The benefits of using YouTube in a class for diverse learners are endless. The autonomy of this website also gives students freedom to discover and present information in all kinds of ways. YouTube comments features also promotes discussion and allows students to give feedback on what they've seen. This generates active involvement from all students in the classroom and even creating their own videos. Educators today are encouraged to use digital learning tools as YouTube engage, as such as YouTube to engage today's digital learners. Targeted YouTube videos can effectively enhance engagement, depth of understanding, and overall satisfaction of students in the classroom. How can YouTube be implemented safely in a classroom environment? Due to YouTube's vast amount of content, it can be easy for students to fall into the wrong rabbit hole. In order to protect students who may find themselves exposed to teachers, exposed to sensitive videos, YouTube has to be monitored by a teacher in the classroom by actively walking around and making sure that students are doing the right thing or by screen monitoring, which means the teacher has access to each child's screen and can see what type of videos they are watching and make sure they're in line with the content and are appropriate. To protect, to protect students further and make sure they are behaving in the right way, Digital consent forms can be signed by students to hold themselves accountable for future punishment. Google Docs is a second learning tool that supports the constructivism approach in the classroom. Google Docs includes an online word processor, spreadsheet and presentation editor that both students and teachers can work collaboratively to present assignments, projects, blogs and many other things. This online tool promotes teamwork and social collaboration which is a major principle of constructivism. Students can work on the same project in real time and brainstorm ideas. This form of learning through social interaction is extremely beneficial to, to students as new behavior can be acquired by observing others and interacting with them. How, can, how does Google support the le learning needs of diverse learners? Students' needs and learning styles differ from student to student and Google Docs was created with accessibility in mind to help diverse learners learn, be inspired and achieve their full potential. Google Docs has many features which are suitable to all types of students in the classroom, including screen readers, keyboard shortcuts, braille displays and voice dictation. These features encapsulate Google's accessibility for all types of learners and when implemented in a classroom environment can enhance learning for both visual and auditory learners. How can Google be implemented safely in a classroom environment? Google Docs gives, gives teachers the opportunity to check student progress on certain tasks and make sure that they are following the guidelines. Through the use of monitoring, students can Teachers can also discover who is not participating because Google Docs tracks every student's input and can be viewed by the teacher to see how much work each student has comp contributed to a project. Google has an extremely high level of safety, although concern forms can be used um, to account for inappropriate behavior. Google Classroom is another online tool that is used to facilitate communication and collaboration between teachers. Teachers use this program to create specific classes, posts, and organize folders and view students' work in real time. Much like Google Docs, students work collaboratively on assignments um, and create projects, discuss topics, and create blogs, no matter where they are. Google Classroom supports diverse learners through accessibility. It supports visual and auditory learners as teachers are able to post video links and podcasts that are specific to the lesson content. Features such as visual aids, closed captioning, real-time collaboration can help overcome learning barriers for all students, whether they have a disability or learn best under specific conditions. Google Classroom can be accessed by any device that has an online feature and by providing options for how students can use technology in the classroom 
and create strong pathways for learning. How can it be implemented safely in a classroom environment? Google Classroom allows teachers to plan classroom activities in advance and integrate the use of technology to meet the demands of the digital era, era that we now live in. Google Classroom ensures a high level of safety through its security software, although work that is posted by teachers should always be checked to make sure that they are appropriate. Again, a consent form for appropriate use of technology is always a good idea to ensure students are doing the right thing in class. Thank you for watching this short video on how educational tools fit into the scope of constructivist approach and how they foster the principles that we see in constructivism classrooms. The strength of constructivist classrooms promote a sense of personal learning from the students and they are forced to take ownership of their learning.